Hi, everybody. I'm Wendy Murdoch, and this is Webinars with Wendy. And this is our Friday webinar where we talk about Surefoot. Um, today, I have Alex Hamilton joining me. She is my super awesome assistant. And um, many of you may or may not realize that you've been connecting with Alex because she handles my social media. So I'm really excited to have Alex with me today because she has been monitoring the contest that we've been running this week. So um, I think everybody who's signed on probably knows we're doing a five week contest for our five years of Surefoot pads. And this week was week one and it was about um, posting on the fans page, a picture of you and your horse and why you love Surefoot. And I, I have to say um, that I was so blown away by the number of people who responded and the comments that they've made. So uh, one of the things I wanted to do today is have Alex just kind of go through some of those and just uh, read them to you because um, for me, it's super exciting uh, just to know how much people are enjoying Surefoot with their horse. So Alex, have you got a really awesome- Yeah, I just, first I want to tell somebody that they are entered. Somebody said they didn't know where to enter and their name, uh, Janet uh, Boser. Oh yeah. You are entered, don't worry. Wherever yeah, so you- Wherever you entered, I got your entry. Yeah, we've been kind of um, realizing that people have been posting in different places. The, the idea was to go to the fans page to post, so we had it in one place, um, but it's okay. We've got you covered. We've got you in there. Um, and I have my bowl and I have all my names cut up. I did that just before we went live because we waited until noon to cut it off for the entries this week. So so Alex, what's one of the comments that you have there? We use, we're not using names, right? Nope. Okay. So um, these are just from people's um, entries, their comments on the fans page. So if you didn't, I'm just looking at the fans page right now. So it says, I love how Surefoot helps my horses relax and gives them the opportunity to show me what they need each day. I also am amazed at how it teaches me and my students how present horses are and how they know exactly what they need. And then there's a picture um, of her horse, Frango, processing his choice of double stack for his left front. And, you know, this is something that somebody said to me the other day that I don't, that they said I didn't emphasize enough was the relaxation. Um, and, and I guess I don't mention it because I think of it as being one of the, it's just there. Um, it's there with so many horses. It's so unusual to have a horse that we don't see signs of relaxation using Surefoot. And those are very rare cases. There, there are times horses that have may have had some trauma and stuff, you might see that they don't relax right away. But that is one of the hallmarks of Surefoot is that immediate relaxation. Um, and I had Dr. Peters, I don't know if you've been watching the webinars I've been doing this week. I had Dr. Peters last night, um, yesterday, and fabulous webinar. But you know, he talks about optimum learning and that horses need to be attentive, but not stressed. And this is where using Surefoot can be so helpful in the training because if he's getting anxious, doesn't understand what you're asking, um, is getting confused, you can just stop for a moment and put your horse on Surefoot pads and just let them let down a little bit so that they get back into that optimum learning state instead of in that kind of stressy state. So that's fabulous, that's, that's great. All right, have you got another one? Yep, we are in all of the changes and results Surefoot can produce, even sneak in a, in a use myself when the horses aren't looking. Makes standing <laughs> so much easier and takes tension out of the spots you don't know could be released. I, I love this one because it talks about using Surefoot pads for you. Um, and we, we have, we started down the track of actually using our products for people, calling it Balance for Life. Um, it's had some fits and starts and right now stops because we've been so busy working with uh, Surefoot and trying to really get that down. And in case you haven't noticed, we completely rebranded three weeks ago. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't use the pads for you. And I think that this, uh, when I'm teaching a riding lesson and I'm working with the rider's horse, like the riders off the horse, I put the rider on the pads while they watch me work with the horse. Um, and then I've had instances where, uh, you know, people are feeling tense or anxious or not grounded. 
Um, in one case, I had a woman who had a headache for over two weeks from a riding accident. And I put her on the half physio pad and literally in seconds, her headache went away. Um, Robin Hood has a fabulous story about using Surefoot with people. She went to South <coughs> Africa and there was a person with, uh, it's called a kyphosis, you know, think of uh, Dowager's home for, um, you know, hunchback of Notre Dame kind of hum hump out the back. And this person stood on the physio pad and straightened up, which was pretty amazing. No input, no words, no guidance, just put them on the pads. So, you know, this is something to really think about if you are um, working through an injury or you've had some imbalance or you don't feel like you stand square, to stand on the pads yourself and feel the benefits of it. And it's for people, it's the exact same pad as the horse. We're just going to have a different logo. And um, because most pads for people for balance training are designed for you to do that without shoes. I mean, that's one of the first statements they say is do not wear shoes. Um, whereas with our pads, we're like, wear your shoes, wear your cleats, wear whatever gear you're going to do your sport in standing on our pads because they can hold up to a horse so they can certainly hold up to a person. So that's awesome. All right. Have you got another one? Okay. Um, I love Surefoot because it is suitable for horses any age. Besides that, I love that it helps horses relax, feel better, and help them with better performance. And then there's a picture of their full socks when he was three months old, enjoying his first experience with Surefoot. And he's got a he's standing on, got one little hoof on a slant and he has got a big old yawn going. Oh, how cool. I'm going to have to go back and find that one because I love stories about foals. Um, yeah. And He's very cute. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to have to scroll back and look. Um, the thing about foals is really short sessions, obviously. And um, we have a number of foals where, like I did a webinar, I talked about um, Kulaz, who was a foal who was a twin and he couldn't even stand up on his own. And so we went and worked with him. And the next day he was gated, turns out he gated. So he was just kind of gating around and whereas he was hardly moving the day before. And then um, Beth Miller, we did a webinar with her and we talked about using Surefoot with foals. She's, she's, um, she breeds ponies. And so she talked about two case studies with her foals. Um, and so this is something that you can definitely use, obviously, when they're very little, very short sessions and gently, gently guiding them to the pads, not trying to put them on the pads, but just kind of have them have the pads set up where they kind of wander over it. So it's not like you have to do a big intervention. But then you think about the growth phases a horse goes through, just like a child. There's awkward phases. There's phases where they're downhill. There's phases where they don't know where their feet are. There's phases when, you know, they're they're um, just growing out of proportion because parts are growing and other parts aren't. This is a great time to use Surefoot because you can then just kept, keep rebalancing them over and over as they go through those growth phases. Um, I had the opportunity to work with a yearling who was really quite stressed. And uh, we used the team technique of the two people at wings, uh, I've forgotten what it's, winged, it's not the winged victory, but anyway, where you have two people uh, way far away. So the horse had a lot of room, but had a, had a kind of extended boundary. And then we just kind of guided over the pads, but it was so obvious that this, it really helped this horse settle. Um, she had had a bit of trauma early on. So just think about how you can use Surefoot with your young horses, because the more balanced they are before you get on their back, the better off they're gonna be when you get on their back. Um, and we do have trainers that are using it during the training process, during the breaking and training process. So just keep that in mind. That's awesome. Okay. Um, next one, I love watching for the little signs that the horses give to indicate they like the pads. The stopping at the pads instead of walking past them, checking in with me, the internal look, the twitching nose, and the pawing of the unpadded foot when I don't put the pad down fast enough. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, you know, I, I love that one because I can't tell you how many people, uh, you know, when I do surefoot with their horse and pretty soon the horse is dragging them back to me, say we're, we're doing a riding lesson, and the horse keeps just dragging their rider back to me so they can stand on pads. So 
first of all, it's really clear that it's meaningful to the horse. And that is really the thing that drives me is that the horses keep telling me this is meaningful and that they really enjoy it. Um, but it's, it's useful, like the subtlety about the horse putting in the nose down and checking out the pad. When you, if you have a horse that's high headed or a bit tense, um, and they have been on surefoot pads. This is a great opportunity to use their desire to be near the pads or go check them out in your training. So what I tend to do is I'll scatter pads around the arena and then I'll have the rider ride past them. And anytime the horse wants to stop and put his neck down, I let them. So the horse will be high headed and it'll walk over to a pad and it puts its neck down and then go on to the next one and the same thing. So without ever trying to make the horse put his head down, he's putting it down because he wants to investigate the pads. He's curious about them. He recognizes that they bring him comfort. And so it, it's sort of a passive training method to have these horses relax, go more parasympathetic, lengthen their top line, be able to stop because a lot of these anxious horses, they can't stop. So once they've been on pads or they have had a feeling of them, you can use them in this way, which is not really the traditional, if you will, way of using sure, but it's more now we're into operant behavior, but we're, we're reinforcing this idea of neck down, relaxation, moving softly, lifting the back because the head goes down um, because they're curious about the pads. So, you know, if you're struggling with your horse, he's a bit high headed and tight backed and you've been using sure foot pads, um, you know, not under saddle, just think about putting them out in your arena and then riding toward each pad and stopping and letting the horse put his head down. Um, if you're familiar with Sharon Wilsey's work with Horse Speak, she talks about safety cones. And I think in a lot of ways, the surefoot pads become safety objects for actually, I uh, have one instance where that was really, really the case, but um, anything we can do to induce that relaxation so that they're more present in their training is, is awesome. So that's great. Might be a good idea for a topic for one of these is, is how to use it in training. I know you've used, done one uh, for pads while riding. Yes. But maybe if you have some protocols like that, might that's be- That's a great idea. Um, see if you can get a riding- Actually instructor. get back to, to being out in the arenas and stuff. Maybe I can do a video on that because it really would help to see how I integrate it into the lesson that way. People would, it would give people a whole new way to use them. Yeah. Um, that we don't see in the videos that you provide so far. Right. And, well. and the key there, Alex, um, which is oftentimes the hardest thing to do is to stop. Um, because we get into, I've got to accomplish this, or the horse isn't listening, or yeah, I saw you. Yeah, we, we get into this mindset of we've got to get this done. Um, and again, going back to Dr. Peter's talk yesterday, um, the horses don't have a win-lose perspective. That just doesn't exist. That's a construct of being a, a person. So when we get in the mindset of we can't let the horse win, we've already lost. Um, and so, but, you know, it's hard to stop. It's hard to stop when we get into a pattern. And believe me, I, I personally know this also, um, where we can reset. And when we are struggling with our horse, we need a reset just as much as the horse does. Because once we're into that struggle, our nervous system is now feeding the horse's nervous system and telling them things aren't great. And so it's, it's a downward spiral and it's really not an easy thing. I mean, okay, so my biggest case in point was in 1984 when I was gonna be a tough event rider and I got on this horse that I knew could rear and he reared up and hit me in the face and I didn't get off, I didn't stop. And because I didn't stop, he reared up again and we flipped over backwards and he rolled over me and he punched my femur through the socket and I wound up in the hospital. So that's just an instance of, you know, sometimes it's really hard for us to stop, but it's the most important thing we can do. Well, because, what, because you're not going to ride a horse out of stress. Right. I, I don't, I, I mean, I just don't think that happens. I think you need to stop. You need to walk. If you use sure foot pads, 
whatever, you need to just take, everybody's got to take a breath because I've never found it to be very successful that once your horse is stressed, you're not going to ride out of that. No, you'll exhaust them, but they're going to be different. stressed. That's, that's the whole different. time. They're right? still not learning. Now they're just tired and worn out and sweaty. Right. And yeah, that yeah. goes back to Dr. Harmon's talk. We were talking about ulcers and she said the most important thing with ulcers is to manage stress. Um, and so if we're stressing our horses in the training, you know, we're setting them up. We're setting them up to have issues like ulcers. Not that every stressed horse is going to have ulcers, but we're setting them up. And so um, you're, you're absolutely right. The, and this is one of the things that people don't, um, I, I can remember so clearly one time being at a clinic and I was with Dr. Harmon actually at the time. And in, ha you know, in an hour, all these horses that were supposed to be working throughout the day, they were done because everybody had gone in en masse. And what we were looking at was adrenally exhausted horses. What people thought they saw were quiet, relaxed horses, but what they were really looking at was horses that were so beyond the pale that they just, get, you know, just stood there. And so, you know, the more we learn and the more we evolve and understand in our training and start to recognize signs of stress, and that's the key is that, you know, it doesn't exist unless we can see it. As we start to recognize signs of stress, we can then take an action. Then we have to stop and do something different. Um, that video is already up on YouTube. I put it up this morning, um, both Joyce's and, and, um, and Dr. Peter's. Yep, it, Joyce's should already be up. Did I put it up? I'll, I'll Alex, look. Did I put it up? Yeah, I'll, Alex is gonna check. I'm pretty sure I I'll put look it up now. I'll but it was a up. nighttime one and... Mm. <laughs> yeah, let me look. I usually um, put them up in the morning. This is why I need Alex. So I think that's very interesting because I think that we see a lot of people, um, I would say primarily people use short foot, un, not under saddle. Yeah. So it would be an interesting challenge for people that are used to using it before or after or on days off to maybe try it during their ride. Right. However, if they have it in the arena or however, and, and that, that minute. Yeah, that's the thing is to, to have some pads in the arena. And if you feel your horse is getting more tense, you're trying to teach them something new, like a lateral move or something, and you just go over and, and if your horses so, are... Uh-oh, did Steve I not? Peters is up, but um, Joyce, Joyce is doesn't. <sighs> Okay. All right. Alex is going to text me a note right now to put up Joyce's webinar. Don't worry. We, we will get it sorted <laughs> out. Don't worry. Um, so it'll be numbered different because we just keep the sequential order of number, but the date is going to be from Wednesday. Um, I, <laughs> thanks for letting us know. Uh, great. I got my text message. So I will do that as soon as we get Good. done with this. One, one last thing I have to follow up on. Yeah. Because I would have been like, where's Joyce's webinar? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, that's that's interesting. I think it would be a good, uh, interesting topic. Well, and that's where you can even if your horse is used to the pads uh, being unmounted, and now you're on their back. Yeah, Mercury is in retrograde. You can just ride over to the pads and give them a moment at the pads. Like some horses, like I said, just seeing them, they start to let down. So if you had them available where you could just ride over and not necessarily get off and put his foot on it, but just ride over and let him put his neck down and take a breath and relax for a few minutes and then go back and ask again. Because what I keep seeing when I use it in training is that the horses already know what you want, but the tension is preventing them from executing the movement. So when we can give them that pause, that, that rest for a moment, and let their nervous system come back down and bring them back into a state where they can process and address the issue, they'll, they'll try harder. And I mean, how many of you, and this is, this happened to me quite a bit with my travels is I would work on something with my horse and then I'd go away for two weeks. And when I would come back, I would get back on and you go, is this what you wanted? I've been thinking about it for two weeks now. Is it, you want counter canter? And I was right. like, Right. Hey, awesome. I just wanted a regular canner, but wow, you've been thinking about this. It's really cool. Well, because there's a train of thought, which I don't see very often. Um, I happen to be in a barn where there's a, a lot of horses that are ridden very regularly. And I don't see, 
I know there's a train of thought that during work, you should stop and give the horse a moment to sort of process. Yeah. Right. And Surefoot would be perfect for that moment because it would let them relax and actually let those, all of those things kind of, like you said, percolate. Yep. Um, and I just don't see pe as many people, they get stuck in this don't stop, right? But that even just, I don't even see people take walk breaks like they should for the horse to process. Because even if you don't stop, if things are stressful, you gotta just, everybody's gotta stop, take a walk, long rain walk, take a breath, and then start again, they're not gonna forget in a four minute walk around the ring, or if you take them in the corner and put them on surefoot and they get a minute to just do a big, a real body breathe, right? Which is what they need, you know? So I'm just, it, it's just- Well, and that, it's you know, a really important thing to train your horses to be able to have breaks in work because say you're going to a dressage test and you're all set to go in the arena and the judge goes, I'm gonna take a pee break now. And so you have five more minutes and your horse is already ready and he doesn't know how to let down and go back to walk and then come back to work again. You know, what are you gonna do? Um, well, I'm an inventor. So we do, <laughs> we do the dressage and then they go, hold on, you know, three more minutes. And then we take another break and then go run cross country. <coughs> so my horse needs to know that when, when I pick up the reins, we're ready, it's time to work. You know, it's time to work no matter whether we worked already but it's, it's not even as deep as that. It's just as deep as giving them a minute to, to, yep. to de-stress yourself too, because I find the longer I go, the more stiff and tense I get. So when I can stop, let him walk and I can do some deep breathing, I feel better. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I can communicate better to him. Yep. Right. So we have a question here. Can a horse benefit from standing on a pad in the mud? <coughs> I'm using my pad for ring bone pain and it's muddy mess here in Virginia. Yes, it is. Um, I think they can because it's a different texture and a different surface. And the nice thing is you can just wash your pad off. Um, if you do have a drier area, that's great. Um, but I, I think that it's going to work even if it's in mud because the, the surface of mud you know, it's gushy. And then um, like on a racetrack, you have the, you've lost the cushion and then you have the hard underneath. So underneath that mud is hard. Um, so putting them on the pad is going to be a different texture and different surface than the mud. Yeah. And like I said, just wash your pads off afterward, which is the easy way to take care of them. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Have we got another um, yep. comment from, and I'll check on this question. Oh, somebody's asking, what's the optimum surface to use pads on? Whatever you have. So um, I, I, I like an arena. And the reason I like an arena is that, um, you know, with a, with a footing, a surface, um, because the other feet are not on pads. And I find on like, when I've worked on, at expos with cement, with rubber mats, the, most of the horses are, they're not gonna settle as well. Um, and I think it's the, the slippiness of the hard pla plastic mat on top of the concrete, um, but an arena surface because of the other feet. Um, but you know, really we have people using them in barn aisles, um, in mud, in paddocks, in arenas, on grass. When I went to Africa, there's no foot, the footing was hard and lumpy because um, it was dry season and it still works great. So you do have to watch out for stickers and burrs. Um, they will poke your pads. So you might want to keep that in mind. Um, my cat drags burrs in every night, <laughs> this time on his back. Um, so just keep that in mind if you have prickers um, that you want to see if you can avoid that. Okay, so I have one, my half finger gelding noble, only the second time on the pads and he loves them. I trim my own horses and the pads help me feel empowered with another tool to keep my horses healthy and sound. Oh, that's awesome. And so this is one of the, the places where using the physio pad while trimming or shoeing is so helpful. And um, we have quite a number of farriers and, and barefoot trimmers now using Surefoot. Um, there's a master farrier, his name is Jeff Stubblefield. And when we were first developing what's now called the physio pad, then it was called the farrier pad because that's who we were designing it for. We gave him a prototype. We said, here, take this and use it. 
and he's a farrier in Tennessee and Nashville, and he shoes a lot of the stars horses. Um, and he's the nicest guy. Uh, and he, we, he contacted me and he told me how much using the pad had helped with the horses with arthritis and, you know, with pain that we're having difficulty standing. And that was, I don't know, probably three, four years ago. And then this spring, he called me again. And just to tell me again, how much Surefoot's been helping him in his job. So, you know, you can see the impression of the foot and how it's loading gives you a direction, gives you an idea. But at the same time, if you make the horses more comfortable, everybody's safer. And that was really the driving force behind that, that physio pad. So it's awesome. Uh, Kyle loves surefoot pads. He gets so incredibly relaxed. It helps him develop core stability and awareness for dressage work and jumping. It helps me learn more about him as well. I love it as a tool for cross training. That's a, that is so great. And, you know, I think this is one of the things I, I also tend not to emphasize is the, is the muscle strengthening that can occur while using surefoot pads. Um, you know, I, I met, done many webinars where we've looked at little muscle changes and seen contractions and, and isometric um, movements in the muscles, but this can really help develop um, stability in those muscles. And so, you know, using your pads regularly, you're going to be building that core stability that's so important. And we've seen a lot of changes with horses in the thoracic sling. They become stronger in their pecs and in um, the whole front end. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I probably, well, I'm going to have a vet come on and talk about rehab. Um, and maybe we can talk about the benefits of Surefoot in terms of developing core stability. I think probably we haven't emphasized that enough. So that's, that's a really great comment. Are you okay? I'm taking notes. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> that's why I have her. <laughs> Just so that we can remember this. Remember that because Alex helps me wrangle all the webinar guests <coughs> and get, get them all set up. So she's a really important part of the team. I'm a webinar. I'm a webinar guest wrangler. That's what I do. For <laughs> um, it, it's not as easy as it sounds. No. <laughs> um, let's see. Helping him reconnect to his body and feet in his recovery from EPM helping him regain proprioception, build back up his proprioceptive awareness and balance. Uh, this is Jackson, a five and a half year old BLM Mustang. Oh, wow. So that's interesting. I, I um, probably haven't heard of, I mean, not that it can't happen, but EPM in a Mustang. Um, I'm here in Virginia, that's, we don't see that many of those horses, um, or at least I don't. But that, she brings up a really, really good point about using Surefoot um, after being treated for EPM. And early on, one of the first uh, people to contact me was a woman here in Virginia and her horse had had EPM. And it was basically at training level, even though before EPM, it had been second level. And she started with the pads and the horse got back to second level. So um, in terms of helping horses know where their body is in space, that's proprioception. Um, and one of the really interesting things that I've learned during all these webinars is that proprioceptors can get hijacked to become nociceptors or pain receptors. So instead of telling you where you are in space, they're telling you it hurts. And until and unless we reset those proprioceptors back to proprioceptors from what they've become, nociceptors, pain receptors, that horse is not going to move as efficiently. Neither is a person. Um, and I think that, you know, in this instance, we can look at people and horses very similarly. Um, my personal experience was when I had surgery a couple of years ago and I could not stand on my left leg after the surgery until I actually stood on the physio pad. And then I could stand on that left leg without holding on. Um, so it helped reset my proprioception and my balance. And I, that was a great experience. Not that I want to have to have that surgery again. It took me three years to recover, but, um, to understand what it's like for the horses to go through that process of having an injury, losing the sense of where you are in space, and then regathering it. I also think that sometimes when we see horses react uh, adversely, like they touch the pad and they freak out or they touch the pad and they, they, they're fine, they start to fall asleep and then they look down and freak out. 
I think it's because they don't feel themselves. They don't have that proprioception. Like the nervous system is unconsciously responding to the, the pad and you're getting some relaxation, but when they look and they become consciously aware of, oh, I'm standing on a pad, they're not connecting that. Um, and that's where I think Surefoot can be super beneficial. You obviously have to be careful working around those horses, um, but this is where a lot of veterinarians are now are, are getting into Surefoot because they can use it for proprioceptive rehab. So that's that's awesome. That's great. Somebody uh, put in the question and answer um, if you could explain what EPM is. Equine protozoal myelitis. Um, so mm -hmm. it's... Uh, they think it comes from possums. It's not a, is it a spirochete? Yeah, I know there's a lot of questions. It, it's a bug. I don't know if it's a, what kind of bug it is, but it gets into the nervous system and they become neurologic. So um, that's probably not the best explanation. It's a protozoa, somebody's. Oh, it's a protozoa, great, thank you. This is where I love my guests because they all help me out. Um, that's why I had a book on my left hip. Oh, so Diane, I'm not sure I totally understand what, what happened with your left hip with a wire? Um, oh, she's saying rewire. She's, I think she- Oh, to rewire. Re okay, re got it. <laughs> it. Stand on a pad. Diane. Yeah. Try a pad. Yeah, it really makes a difference. Um, Lyme disease is another one where horses can become neurologic or uh, you know, their muscles get woody and hard. And of course, with any of these uh, illnesses, you really need to have a vet diagnostic vet come out and diagnose your horse because if you don't know what you're dealing with um surefoot might not be recommended at that time uh you know if the horse is showing neurologic signs you don't want to make them feel more unstable because that can make them feel really anxious um, just think about you if you've ever had any vertigo which i have also had and then somebody says here stand on something that's unstable you don't want to do it so um you know if your horses are saying they don't want to stand on the pads and it starting to become a thing, you might want to call your vet and just have a talk about it. Um, there are some days when horses want pads and other days when they don't, uh, and that's okay. But if you start to see that they're getting worse, they're getting more anxious, they're starting to react when they even see the pad, um, they can't stay on it, then you really need to investigate that further and find out what's going on because that is, a, is an unusual thing to happen with Surefoot. Yeah, even my my guy who is very skeptical is now, even if he doesn't step on it, he he's not skeptical of them. He knows what they you are. You want to tell him about your horse? Because he's been interesting. Yeah, so I have an off-the-track thoroughbred, and he's um, not particularly spooky. Um, he was um, a stallion longer than he needed to be. Um, he was a stallion until he was almost six. Oh, wow. And he's not well bred, so I'm not sure why that is a thing or why somebody would do that. Um, because it has created, I understand that at the time he was kind of um, studdish, shall we say. So he has retained some of his, the behaviors from then. Um, he can, he is a, come at me bro kind of guy so if he's afraid of something he goes at it he snorts but he he goes at it so that's it always been unusual to me because most horses will look see something and either freeze or spook he's more of a i'm going to freeze for a minute and then i'm going to go at it when i first brought the pads out because now I work for Wendy Murdoch and I'm like, this is great. My horse is going to be, I'm going to get so much out of these pads. He was like, you have lost your mind if you think I'm standing on one of these pads. So he would put his foot down because he tries to do what, he tries to figure out what I'd like him to do. Um, and then he would kind of step off and, and snort and arch his neck and do the whole thing. And then he'd like push it. And so I just I talked to Wendy and Wendy said, just give it a rest, try it again in a week. So I've, once a week I've been putting the pad, it, using the pads, at some point he's no was no longer afraid of them. He could give or take them. Um, would, I would get relaxation and some response, some licking and chewing, but we've finally gotten to the point where I like to do it now before I ride. Um, I have a busy arena, so it's a little hard for me. Um, to leave um, pads in the arena, but I think once the snow 
we have a back ring that has less people in it. Once the snow lifts, I may go throw some in there because I have been having, like we were discussing, he can get himself into a very high stress point. And I think it might be a good idea to hop off and throw him on a pad. But um, so now he's like, much more reactive. He doesn't do all the, the weaving and swaying, but he clearly likes them and will stand on them. I don't, but, but I have to video and look back to see what's actually happening because it looks like nothing's really happening except he lowers his head a little bit and licks and chews. But when I look at the video, I can see how there's small muscle changes um, that because Wendy said, make sure you video because you're not going to see stuff until you, you know, because you're watching and I'm like in a barn aisle and I'm watching to make sure he's not going to freak out and our other horse is coming and, you know, so uh, then I look back and I can see how the postural muscles are working and how his chest is moving slightly as he moves on. So he likes the firms in the front and then the firm slants in the back. He is very matter of fact. If I try any other thing, he won't do it at all. Yeah. And but, Alex, you've probably forgotten, but I remember that when you first started with him, he, he would, when you would start your warm up, he would walk really okay. crabby for 20 minutes and then he'd finally free up. And when you started using Surefoot, you didn't, he didn't stay on it very long and you didn't see uh, overt signs looking true, but the walk changed. Yep. And that was the immediate. It has, and it has still, now he, if he's in for a, you know, a little bit, it might not, but if, his walk is much better. He walks off much freer um, just from the beginning of the surefoot. His walk, as usual, like like all of us, you know, um, everything's much freer at the end. But that kind of tight walk that I got it, for a long time in the beginning is completely gone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so sometimes we don't even realize uh, what's changing or what has changed because it can be subtle and small at first. And that's where, you know, just taking a little video of your horse uh, and making some notes. And this is one of the things that we have um, people who want to become surefoot practitioners, case studies, they've got to do case studies. And the reason is because just like Alex said, when you're in the process, there's a lot going on. And, you, you know, if you have people around or there's a barn aisle or it's a busy place or just the things your eye is attracted to at the moment. But when you go back and look at that video, it's amazing how many other things are happening that you missed at the time. Um, and so that's even if you're, you're, you're just uh, not, you know, you're a horse owner and you never plan to become a practitioner. If you can get somebody to film or just film while your horse is standing on the pad, just step back and pull out your phone um, and take a little video and then go back and watch it later. I think you will be surprised at just how much is going on that you, you didn't notice at the time. Um, I certainly find that when I, I've been going back and reviewing videos now for a while and and picking up lots of little things that, you know, you just miss at the moment because there's a lot going on. So that's well, awesome. Yeah, and you just don't see it all. It's impossible. Yeah. It's impossible to, to see it all. All right. Have we got another testimonial there or a, a comment? Yes, this is a good one. After only owning my sure foot pads for several weeks, I'm becoming a huge fan. Mr. Darcy is a five-year-old TB who was given to me as a paddock companion two years ago. I was told he wouldn't be up to a full life under saddle. Last year, I tragically lost my main horse, so I decided to see how Darcy would go. With lots of slow, gentle work, he was okay, but strange over-muscling happened and then total lameness. Vets were unable to help. I know we, were on a, we are on a long road, but wow, the changes in the last few weeks are astounding. Most of our work is in hand, but I finally have a happy, playful horse for the first time since he arrived years ago. He gallops, jumps, bucks in the paddock and looks sound. Amazing products. I feel like I'm a winner already. Well, that's awesome. I, these are one. the ones that warm my heart. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. You know, and it, it's, uh, you know, some days here in the office, there's, there's a lot of work behind the scenes that nobody sees. Um, and some struggles and things that we're, you know, we've been working on. And so some days you kind of get up in the morning and you go, oh, and um, things like that, stories like that really warm my heart and just keep me going. So thank you so much for that. Make, one. Making horses happy one hoof at a time, right? Yeah. I mean, that's uh, a great story if it was not sound and not, and, and then now he's comfortable and running around in the paddock. Yeah. If that's all he can do, then that's a success. Right, absolutely. 
Um, and there is a thing called habitual lameness. I mean, um, I, I know that some people don't think that that's possible in horses, but I've seen enough horses um, that have been habitually lame. And then you work with them. I had one horse in particular, he was like three-legged lame in the field. And, um, but it was a habit. His owner was a vet and she did over $10,000 worth of diagnostics as a veterinarian and they found nothing and it was a habit. And so just like people, we can get stuck in these patterns and unless something wakes us up and, and gets us out of that pattern and diagnostics are really important, right? If you've got something serious going on, you wanna know about it so that you don't make it worse. But you know, with all that diagnostics, they didn't find anything. And so then it was a question of helping reset that nervous system and get a new pathway going and reestablish soundness. So it was, it was, yeah, the power of habits for humans too. Um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Habits are really good. We have really good habits. And then sometimes the habits don't do us any good or we outgrow that habit and it's time to move on. Well, there's, and there's a ton of horses that are lame for no reason. Like they do all the tests and they can't find out. Right. It happens all the time. You hear those stories all the time. We've had this test and that test and nobody can find anything and there's flexions and then, you know, and then they can't canter to the left no matter what. And the, these pads are really. I'm Actually, just sure. that, there, there is a horse that we had come to a clinic. Um, it was at CRK training and the horse could not pick up one lead in the field even. And in two days of Surefoot, it was cantering on that lead all the time. Yep. I think it's just, I mean, I think for just for overall wellness, like knock on wood, my horse doesn't have any particular issues. Um, and when the body worker came, she thinks he's in very good shape. He's got a good, uh, a good stance. I know he's never, you know, racked out, but this, I do this for wellness. To yeah. Continue wellness. And relationship. And I, and I, I don't too. know if we have a story there, a, a comment about relationship. I haven't seen one yet. Okay. But that's one of the things that for me is, um, is so profound that the horses very quickly realize that you're safe. And this is again, going back to Dr. Peter's webinar, you know, and the other webinars we've had about polyvagal theory, the vagus nerve, biggest nerve in your body, 10th cranial nerve, its question is, am I safe? And when horses don't feel safe, they're going to have to start behaviors. We call it behaviors, but they're calling it, I don't feel good, um, activities, whether that's tension, nervousness, you know, snorting, just you know, holding their breath, right? All of these things because they don't feel safe. And so we really need to answer that question for them. That is so critical. Um, and what Surefoot does is it answers that question. It says, yeah, not only are you safe, but I'm going to make you feel good. And if you choose not to do it, that's totally cool. Like it's not something you have to do. It's something you might want to do. If you want to do it, great. I'll help. I'm not going to force you. This is up to you that, that right. you have the choice because to me, that's the most important thing is you can train and train and train. But if your horse does not trust that you are not going to put them into a bad situation, yeah. you're, you're swimming upstream. They need, to, they need to trust that when they are in your hands, nothing's going to hurt them yeah. and, and things are going to help them, that yep. you're going to um, do things to help them. Janelle has made an interesting comment here. She says, I think wellness is underappreciated. I found that with telling people about Surefoot, they want to know what it will fix in caps. Um, what about wellness and optimizing the horse's health? Absolutely, Janella, and that's really um, that's really the key. There doesn't have to be a problem to use Surefoot. There, you know. And the other way, if you, when you're talking to those people, what you can do is bring up, you know, what do athletes do? They have massage. They see a sports therapist. They rest. They meditate. They do all these things for their wellness to do their sport. What do we do for horses? You know, Surefoot offers the opportunity to let the horses let down, to feel at rest, to feel deep relaxation. And so you can use that as an equivalent is we need to do something for the horses because they are athletes. Even if they're carrying us down the trail, they're still an athlete in that they have to carry us, uh, you know, a long distance down the trail. And so we need to optimize their health and wellness so that they can do that with 
the least adverse effect possible. So that it's a it's a joy and a, and a pleasure. Yeah, I agree 100%. I think that's, I mean, and, and we all want our horses to be well, and we all go through what should we feed them and what should we do all this and, you know, for wellness, right? Um, and I think that that's, that's why I do it because I don't actually see any, you know, other, once he, once that walk freed up, I don't actually see like a huge difference when I get on, but I want him to stay the way he is. I want him to continue to feel good. Right. I want him to be able to relax. And um, it's hard for them to relax. It's hard for horses. Well, especially, I didn't realize he was a stallion for that long. Yes. Um, and they, they have the, you know, the vigilance thing going on. So yeah. And he, yeah, and he has some of those little things. He's a little possessive about his food and he'll, you know, most horses, most, you know, unsuspecting geldings, if there's another horse, they'll kind of stick their nose out. Not him, he puffs up like a, he's king of the world, tail goes in the air, neck goes up. You know, most times he's not going to do anything, but that's his response. Right. His response is to his challenge. Response is, look to how, look yeah. how big I am. And I have the same problem sometimes riding in close quarters because he's like, which horse should I go after first? Okay. He doesn't. But, right. it's in but the, the thought is in there. He's going, I, I need to protect somebody. I need to protect myself. So, so yeah, there's, so to give him the opportunity to just take a deep breath is important for him. Yeah, he and that's, hyper, that's as a, a racehorse, that be a, a that's good a very characteristic, good though, right? Because the racehorses run up along the next guy, and they look at him and go, oh, "You're not going to win." And then they blow. <laughs> oh, so yeah, yeah. Yesterday in the indoor, when a horse was cantering up behind me, and he heard he heard those hooves. Yeah, we were at the racetrack. Yeah, I was, and he's not usually like that. I wasn't expecting it, but he shot out from under me like, "Oh no, here they come! I got to go." So yeah. Um, so I think wellness is, I, I think that's a, I think that's right. I think we get a lot of questions about can, can Surefoot fix this? Can Surefoot, I mean, we, we get emails all the time, right? Wendy, of what does it fix? Right. And I think that that's right, is that it, it does fix some things, but it also can just be used as a- Well, what it does is it fixes you to reset your thoughts. <laughs> you know, right. it gets you to shift into a different mindset um, to think more about, what is happening in front of me as opposed to how, how do I change this? Because, uh, you know, Dr. Feldenkrais said, and I just love this quote, he said, you can't do what you want until you know what you do. And so Surefoot helps us see what horses are doing, whether they're standing squarely, whether they're leaning, whether they've got a foot propped out, whether they're not getting the whole contact of their foot on the pad, um, and whether there's tension. And so when we start to think of it from those terms, as opposed to fixing something, nothing's broken. We just have to learn something is what Feldenkrais always talked about. Um, we just have to learn something and then we can take an action on that if it needs an action. And maybe it doesn't, maybe it's already resetting, the horse is resetting himself. And so there doesn't need to be anything to, to, to act on. All right, let's do one more uh, comment and then we're gonna do our drawing. Yay. Surefoot pads have been a game changer for Farletta. That's, I love that name. Hold on. Um, for Farletta, chronic unsoundness that is not located in a foot or leg is particularly challenge, challenging to treat. I love Surefoot pads because Farletta can decide for herself what she needs to make the adjustment that will help her the most in the moment. The Surefoot pads take out the stress factor that manipulative therapies can present. That's a very good point. Mm. There is no pushing, poking, prodding, especially helpful for a horse that can be apprehensive about touch. The Surefoot pads present a great adjunct therapy option. That's a good one. Wow, that's that's great. And it and it does bring up something that Catherine Wyckoff and I have talked about in that, you know, when you lift one leg to do a leg circle and I, you know, I've done team leg circles for years. I think they're fabulous. Her point was being when you lift one leg that horse has to actually stabilize in a way to let you have that leg but when they're standing on sure foot pads they're doing all of that adjusting themselves they've got their four feet they might and you see this quite often they'll be standing on two pads they'll take one foot off and they'll just put that one foot on the ground and then remain on the other pad or they'll shift the pad slide it somewhere reorganize it rearrange it um, so that they're getting what they need. And that's not something that we can figure out from the outside. 
That's something that the, they're doing from the inside. And so again, giving them that opportunity to be able to feel and shift and, and move around or step off or, you know, just rest a toe. And we, we get horses all the time where somebody says, you know, he only put his toe on it, which is fabulous and makes huge change. So, you know, the, the horse is getting this choice and this option to figure out and re and rearrange himself as opposed to, you know, um, are in, in some cases, some horses feel invaded and, you know, body work can be fabulous. And don't get me wrong. I do body work on, you know, on horses. And I have a lot of great friends that do body work. Um, but sometimes horses like people, you know, like somebody goes and starts to poke on you and you're like, ah, not there. Um, so it gives them a, it gives them a choice and you can combine it with body work. Totally fine. Um, just make sure you work with this technique separately first so you don't overwhelm the horse. Um, but, you know, it's, it's more options and more choices. And I think that that's the key is it's another tool in your kit. It can be used in so many different ways. You can combine it with other concepts and ideas. Um, so it's very fluid and it can just, and it's portable. It can go with you. You can pop it in the trailer and, and uh, we've had people literally trailer into the trailhead take the horse out of the trailer, put him on the sure foot pads, a horse that could not go down the trail for a mile without being completely anxious. They did sure foot two or three times. They took the horse the third time to the trailhead, put the horse on the pads, five miles down the trail. Everything was fine. Horse was totally fine. And they had tried everything to fix this horse. So just another example of how you can use sure foot. All right, I Alex. I think it's limitless. Yeah, it's time for the drawing. Okay. So I'm stirring. So exciting. I'm gonna just Is everybody excited? Here. Hold your breath. Hey, drum roll, please. Okay, got it. And the winner is Sarah Plovermacher. Sarah, I don't know if I can hold that up to the, oh, it's back right. Do you see that? Plovermacher. Marker. Yeah, you have won. Awesome, Yay, you won this week's contest. So we'll be in touch to find out what pair of pads you want. Um, and just remember everybody to be eligible for the grand prize week six. You need to enter all five contests. Now, if you miss a week, it's not a problem. Just go back and, and enter. You just don't get entered into the weekly drawing, right? So I've just drawn week one. So week one, there will not be another prize. But if you did not enter week one, you can go and do that at any time. So that you can enter all five and we're keeping track. We have a little scorecard. So we know if you've entered all of the contests and then those names Sarah. and only those names. <laughs> Sarah on this held their breath. <laughs> I'm sorry. There was a few Sarahs actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Tara. Sorry, sorry Tara. Sorry, um, Sarah Hathaway. Um, but just remember we're gonna, on Sunday we'll announce the next um, contest and just stay tuned for that. And um, thank you all for joining me today. And thank you all for your fabulous comments and how Surefoot's helping your horses. It really makes my heart sing and uh, keeps me going. So especially in February, thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Yep, thanks, Alex. This is great. Bye. Bye.